Our sermon title for the day is Being the Apple of God's Eye. Being the Apple of God's Eye. When I was a little girl, when my mom used to tell me, you are the apple of your daddy's eye. I had him wrapped around my finger. I didn't mess with mama like that, but I had daddy wrapped around my finger, being the apple of God's eye. And in different translations, verse 8 says, in the Revised Standard Version, keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. Out of the Amplified Bible, Verse 17 of Psalm, verse 8 of Psalm 17 says, Keep me in your affectionate care. Protect me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the protective shadow of your wings. That's the Amplified Bible. Then the Christian Standard Bible says, Protect me as the pupil of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Let me tell you where this came from, the phrase. The apple of my eye is a very old and first appears in Old English. And the phrase apple of my eye refers in English today to something or someone that one cherishes above all others. I want you to read all of chapter 17 of, of Psalm 17 this week. And I want you to see if you can relate to it and how it makes you feel knowing that Whatever you go through, you're the apple of God's eye. And then when we go over to the Second Thessalonians letter, we believe it was written by Paul. Why was it necessary for Paul to tell the people at Thessalonica what he said in chapter 2, verses 13 through 17? Verse 16 of the text in Greek actually translates eternal encouragement and good hope in grace. Verse 17 translates to may he encourage your hearts and may he, God, establish you in every work and good word. Paul told the people to stand firm in their faith and what they had been taught by Paul and his disciples. Don't be, what, what Paul is saying, he's telling the people, the Thessalonians, don't be swayed by anything other than the good news of Jesus Christ. Paul was encouraging the people by letting them know that they were important to God and they were important to him. And that he, Paul, gave thanks for their belief, for their work, because they were chosen by God. And they accepted God through the risen Christ. So what can we learn from this? Just as we must protect the pupils of our eyes, so God will protect us. However, we must not conclude that we have some, somehow missed God's protection if we experience troubles. Let me say that again. We are still protected by God even when we experience troubles. God's protection has far greater purposes than helping us to avoid pain. It is to make us better servants for the Holy One. And then God also, number two, protects us by guiding us through the painful 
circumstances. Not only, sometimes God protects us so that we won't have to go through them, but sometimes God doesn't. And that's for us to keep the faith in God. Faith cannot be increased unless we experience some pain. So, as this text says, number three, let's encourage one another like Paul did with the Thessalonians. Remind each other that we are the apple of God's eye. And when we are the apple of God's eye, our relationship with God grows. I have to leave the text, not the text, my, my manuscript for a little bit. Like Paul told the Thessalonians that he gave thanks for them, I give thanks for all of you. Not only are you all the apple of God's eye, you're the apple of my eye. I know I'm standing because of your prayers. I thank God for you. But I want you all to know that all of us from the pulpit to the pews, we are the apple of God's eyes. We can't buy it. All we can do like that little one says is believe. And even when we don't believe, we're still the apple of God's eye because Jesus, the risen Christ, advocates on our behalf every time we make a mistake and stop believing. You, 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 you are the apple of God's eyes. And that's something to be grateful for. That's something to be thankful for. Even when we go through problem times, from the pulpit to the pews, I know I'm the apple of God's eye. Even before I accepted God. Why? Because I am created in the image of God. In God's likeness. And anything that God creates, God loves and God protects. And that's why we have to bless the Lord at all times. And like Paul, and then I'm closing, because I'm, get, I'm getting you out of here early so that you can come back to the gospel concert. And I know this is driving my media up the wall, because we still have 15 more minutes. Go get your brunch. And even if you don't bring 10 people, bring yourselves and come back. Encouraged my soul. When I read Psalm 17, it reminded me that no matter what I go through, I'm the apple of God's eye. God loves me. And then when I go to that 2 Thessalonians text, when Paul tells the people at Thessalonica, remain firm. You're going to go through some things. Remain firm. Life is not going to always be like we want it. Remain firm. Remain firm in what? Remain firm in my word that lo I am with you always and how does it end even to the end of the world amen you are the apple of God's eye that should be a amen amen